I'm Chris and welcome to Earth Juice, your weekly vlog of news from the natural world. Coming up this week, a bonobo-based experiment, code-cracking birds, and mice with a nose for explosives. Let's juice. Oh, oh, oh. Excuse me. Oh. Bonobos. They're a frisky bunch. And researchers from the University of Pisa, yes, the place where the tower leans, have discovered that it's not just getting off with each other at the drop of a hat, which keeps them together. But yawns, yes, yawns, also appear to play a vital role. Scientists spent three months observing bonobos in Appenhul Primate Park in the Netherlands, making a note every single time that the bonobos yawned. Now that is tiring work. They then recorded if any other chimps yawned, how soon after the original yawn was that yawn, and also who yawned it. Still following? Oh, sorry, late night. Oh, really? Go anywhere nice? Well, you were there. Weird. Anyway, after well over a thousand yawns, the scientists confirmed that yawns are more contagious between friends and relatives, and their findings support the idea that contagious yawning is actually a basic form of empathetic communication, a bit like laughing or smiling. But those fervent scientists aren't tired of their studies yet. They now want to see if yawns pass quicker between relations than friends, and if a really big yawn affects its infectiousness. Next up, cuckoos. Every parent's nightmare. Well. I mean, if you're a bird, if you're a bear, I guess you're not really that bothered. Cuckoos are famous for invading the nests of other birds. They lay their eggs, then fly off, leaving the cuckoo chick to take over the nest, while the unsuspecting surrogate parents do all the hard graft. But researchers from Flinders University in Adelaide have recently witnessed how fairy wrens are fighting back with a secret code. Now, the Horsefield's bronze cuckoo is like any other cuckoo. It simply can't be bothered to raise its own chicks, and much prefers the fairy wrens to do it for them. However, researchers noticed that when incubating her eggs, the mother wren sang a particular tweet unique to her. The scientists recorded that when the wren chicks hatched, they retweeted the same call made by their mother. But if a cuckoo had hatched in the nest, it wouldn't know this password, allowing the mum to determine whether the chick is hers or not. To check that this wasn't a genetic tweet passed on from its parents, scientists swapped the eggs in different nests, and when the chicks hatched, they sang the password of the wren that incubated them, and not that of their biological mother. So, while the cuckoos are quick to adapt to change, this time it appears that the wrens have struck a chord that the cuckoos simply cannot replicate. And finally, mice. If they're not chewing holes in your skirting board, it turns out that they're part of a crack team of bomb-detecting experts. Yes, Israeli scientists recently reported that mice could be better than pat-downs, but their paws are just so small. And scanners at detecting an above-board passenger from an explosives-toting troublemaker. Now, mice have one of the best noses in the business. If we're talking olfactory, that's the sensory receptors in your nose, rodents are considered to be on a par with, if not better, than sniffer dogs. Eran Lambroso thought up his mouse-based detector while a major in the Navy. And when back on dry land with his brother, they set about building their own airport scanner, powering it with rodents, who, unlike dogs, don't need constant attention from their handlers. The detector houses 24 mice who mooch around, possibly eat some cheese, maybe even running around in a little wheel. But as air is passed over people walking through the scanner, if the mice sniff traces of explosives, they're trained to flee to a side chamber, thus raising the alarm. During tests, a thousand people walk through the mouse scanner, 22 of which were smuggling mock explosives. The diligent mice spotted every last one of them. While this technology is still young, it may not be that long before eager mice are sniffing you as you jet off on your city break. So at the start, we promised you an experiment. Well, did you yawn when I yawned? Or did you yawn because you were looking for the Hobbit trailer and ended up watching this? Either way, let us know in the comments below and we'll see if yawning can be contagious via a screen. You can also like us down here and subscribe up there. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Oh, oh, oh.